Welcome to Lecture 5 of our series on prosody. Here we'll start on the acoustic aspects of prosody. We'll cover some very basic signal processing and introduce F0 contours, which we'll see a lot in this course. In the last lecture, we saw how the vocal folds, the white bands here, can open and close as the air passes through the glottis. How does this relate to pitch? Well, the short answer is each open-close cycle is a pitch period. As these get shorter, meaning a faster vibration rate, the pitch is higher, and conversely. But there's some complexity. Graphing can help. Here you see time on the x-axis, and we're looking at the effects of the glottis repeatedly opening and closing, high airflow and no airflow. This is not a direct measurement of the glottis, but a measurement of what's going on in the air. So it's an acoustic view. Before we only had the articulatory view, but now we're talking about acoustics. The fundamental frequency is a good way to summarize this pattern. It's how many times this basic cycle repeats. The units are cycles per second or hertz. This is also called F0 for short. So to compute it, you can take a second of speech and count how many cycles occur. But in practice, pitch can change over short segments of time, so it's better just to measure one pitch period or a couple. This one is 6.6 .6 milliseconds, and then use the formula. So the F0 is 1 over the period. All right, now this example here sounds like this. Okay, I think you can hear th there's a pitch, right? It's a buzzing sound, but there is a pitch, and it does sound like 150 hertz. You can also hear that this is not a real human voice, and that's in part because the human glottal flow is more complex. The vocal folds are kind of wobbly and they dance around as they open and close. And the human voice doesn't come straight out from the throat. It has to pass through the oral and nasal cavities, which adds some nice resonances. All right. So compared to that waveform on the left, the waveform on the right is, well, the peaks are closer together, which means the vibrations are faster, which means a higher fundamental frequency. We'll often use F0 plots. So we'll show things in the frequency domain. So in the F0 plots, the higher is the higher pitch, the more hertz. And just crudely, the left one is lower in pitch than the right one. Now, it's rare that the pitch is actually constant. Let's do a little skill test here. So here we have a pitch that's either going up or down. Which do you hear? Uh. Up or down? Okay. Uh. Well, I hear it going up. But amazingly, not everyone does. Perceptions vary. Now, I know people who find this hard to believe. People with strong musical training and a good ear for pitch may think it's tri trivially obvious. But many people find it hard to accurately characterize small pitch differences or small pitch movements. How do they survive? Well, in daily communication, prosodic meanings never rely on small pitch differences alone. There are always correlates which people often can pred predict, perceive. So you don't have to be great at pitch to communicate. But there are also people who actually have amusia. They're, they're tone deaf. This could be the result of a stroke, for example. Absolutely terrible for music appreciation, but again, not necessarily so much for speech. OK, so I say this goes up. And it sounds that way to me. Most people agree with me. And you know, since I'm still not sure, we can check by graphing the signal. So this is what Pratt shows us. Pratt is an absolutely wonderful tool. It's easy to download and run. All right, so here's the sound again. Uh. OK, and there's the waveform. It looks kind of like the synthetic one we saw before. I, I changed the scale, and it's more complex. But it's the same basic thing. On the upper left, you can see glottal openings, three of them there. That marks off two cycles. To the right, you can see a couple different ones. Um, and the two cycles here are taking less time. So the pitch is indeed going up. Now we can get some help from Pat Pratt. We don't need to count these things and label them by hand. Pratt will spot those things for us, do the computation, and plot a nice blue line for F0. F0 is a proxy for pitch, for reasons we'll discuss. Uh, but first, a little digression. Do you hear this as a male voice or a female voice? Well, uh, yeah, it, it is female, although it could also be a male child. It's not an adult male, and we know because the pitch is kind of high. The vocal folds are vibrating quickly. Uh, these particular vocal folds happen to be vibrating quickly because they're kind of short, 
and that's because they're in a kind of smallish larynx, uh, which belongs to my daughter. Adult males, we have these larger larynxes, which actually bulge out of our throats with longer vocal folds, which tend to vibrate more slowly, lower pitch. The prosody of gender is actually <coughs> very complicated, more social than physical, but uh, there's a basic correlation there. Now, most of the time, pitch doesn't just drift up or drift down. Uh, and when you look at more complicated ones, there's a few uh. things to be aware of. Gaps, errors, and microprosodic effects. We'll cover each of these in turn. So, pitch tracks now for a real sentence. Legumes are a good source of vitamins. All right, looking at the F0 contour, that's the blue line here, you may notice a couple gaps. So these occur at the two S sounds in source. Source. They are unvoiced, meaning the glottis is open, the air flows out freely, there's no vibration. You can contrast that with uh, the Z of vitamins. If you put your hand on your throat and produce an S and a Z, <laughs> the latter buzzes, that's the vocal fold, it's so opening and closing. Um, in general, unvoiced consonants just have no pitch. F0 is not defined at those points. This bothers some people. They like to smooth them and interpolate them and connect them. Uh, that can be risky. Another issue is that pitch trackers make mistakes. Uh, for example, something looks strange right about here. We know that there's an error because the human glottis cannot instantaneously reconfigure to produce such an extreme pitch shift. So one of these two points must be wrong. Which one? Almost certainly the top one. Um, pitch tends to be continuous. Now, you can configure Pratt or other pitch trackers to prioritize smoothness, and in this case, that would probably solve the problem, but that might introduce problems in other cases. In general, um, you need to look at these things with, with human judgment if you're trying to come up with a pitch contour that really corresponds to human perception. And third, there are issues due to microprosody. When I say legumes are good, probably what you're hearing is a smooth pitch declination. Same for the second part of the sentence. You're probably not hearing those little dips. Uh, those are there due to obstructions to the airflow. Uh, that is to say, the F0 can be perturbed by vocal tract constrictions. So for the G in legumes, for a moment my tongue comes up, blocks the airflow entirely, and the vocal folds still manage to vibrate, but they don't have enough, enough push <laughs> to vibrate at the same frequency. And a V doesn't stop it entirely, but it slows it down. So although these things are there acoustically, and it's true articulatorily, uh, perceptually, we, we don't perceive those as pitch tips. All right, so overall, it would be great if S0 and pitch always corresponded, but they don't. Pitch is something that we hear. It's in our ears and brain. Acoustics is what you can measure with a microphone or compute from the signal that you get. F0, actually log F0 here. We'll talk about that later. F0 is a proxy for pitch. It's usually close, but it's not accurate. In fact, for every prosodic feature going forward, we can talk in terms of these two aspects. And actually, a third, the articulatory mechanisms. For pitch, these were, of course, just the glottal closures. For pitch, the, the discrepancies between the acoustic measure and the percept are relatively mild. For other features, it gets much more complicated. All right, Come, going forward, for the next two lectures, we're going to focus on the percept and the articulatory mechanisms, leaving the acoustic measures for later. So to summarize, in this lecture, we've explained the fundamental frequency, or F0, seen how to graph it, and explained that it corresponds to perceptions of pitch, but not exactly. For the next two lectures, we'll set pitch aside for a bit, and we'll compute complete our tour of prosodic properties.